Hey guys, Justin Ledford here and welcome to the Real Construction Owners Podcast. Today we have a special guest, Matt Faircloth, where we're going to be discussing how you can build wealth as a contractor using the money you earn to build a real estate empire like Mac did. If you're a contractor and or an investor, you're going to want to hear these investing strategies. This class has been brought to you by federalconstructionuniversity.com where we teach you Everything you need to know, a blueprint, A to Z, strategies, scripts, methodologies, teaching entrepreneurs and contractors how to build wealth by utilizing federal construction contracts. Members in my organization are winning deals all over America and in their backyard, making anywhere from 50 to 100 to 200 to a million plus dollars per deal that they land within the government sector. So again, if you want to learn how to win high paying government contracts, and not have to waste time and energy and effort like I did. I invested over $100,000 to hire a retired government contractor to teach me how to do this stuff. And thereafter, we won deals all over America. So if you want to learn how to do that, go to the links down below. I also have my book, Federal Construction Contract Simplified, which and if you like to read or listen to audios, That'll be available in a link down below. It'll teach you everything on how to get started and start winning these government contracts. If you're a contractor and you're not winning large 100, 250, 300, 500 million, three, five million dollar contracts, what are you doing? If you're just going after the 20, 30, 50 thousand dollar homeowners and residential deals, you need to learn how to win these government deals. It's the same thing. It's easier. They pay you every time and you don't, there's no headache. So go to those links down below. Without further ado, let's get started with our episode. Welcome to the Real Construction Owners Podcast, where we interview real construction owners and business owners doing big things to help you go from being a stressed out operator to a thriving business owner. Today, we have a special guest, Matt Faircloth, the owner of the DeRosa Group, who specializes in doing big deals. I'm specifically talking about syndications of apartments, he also has an education platform where he teaches individuals how to have a successful real estate business. And lastly, he's the author of the Raising Private Capital book. Listen, I know you're a contractor you're saying, what can I learn from this guy? But you need to pay close attention because this guy's net worth far exceeds most people's net worth. And he's a good human being that is a part of a mastermind I'm personally in. So today, without further ado, we're going to introduce Matt Faircloud. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. I'm good. Justin, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So, Matt, you know, before we dive into the key nuggets and takeaways to to add value to our audience, I'm curious, what's your story? What's your background? And and don't don't be shy. Brag a little bit and tell our audience who you are, what you've accomplished, and why they should listen to you when you're sharing that story. <laughs> Cool. I, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, so Matt Faircloth, I up just uh, north of Philadelphia and uh, my company controls about, give or take, or just under 2,000 units of multifamily currently uh, in Kentucky, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. Um, one reason why I think that, that I can offer up interesting conversations is my company, I've been around for 17 years, Justin. And so I, I, I'm not a product of a recent market cycle or something like that. I've been doing this for years and I've seen multiple market cycles. And I've also revamped and retooled my company several times uh, as the economy has changed. And so I am a uh, product of change and I've been able to stay relevant and stay uh, in the game of real estate through the ups and downs that real estate's had over the last 17 years. Wow. 2,000 large apartment complexes, large buildings all throughout the north eastern part of America. Yeah. That that's that's phenomenal. I'm curious, how'd you how'd you get started in acquiring large buildings? Because a lot of people they start with you know little one door, two door. Yeah, it sounds like you're doing bigger things. So did I. So I got, but my wife and I got up to 115 units, self managed, self everything. I I, I was pop, she was mom. They we, we were mom and pop, right? Uh, over 115 units with a small team helping us self manage most of the stuff out of Trenton, New Jersey. I figured out what my core strength was. And I think that one thing I want to carry forward to your audience here, Justin, is everyone's got a core strength. Like a, you know, call it a God-given talent, 
call it a core genius, call it a thing that you're great at, whatever it is. And I mean, some some folks call it a, a unfair, a, a, un, a unique ability. I like to call it a superpower as well. As you can see, I'm a big fan of Captain America, right? So um, I, you could call it a superpower, whatever you want. My superpower is attracting money to my business and explaining complex things in a simple manner. So I can explain an apartment complex to a 10 year old. Um, I can attract a lot of attention to my company and get folks excited about raising mo about you know, investing money with our company because I can make things like owning apartment buildings simple enough that it makes sense to those that are not in the middle of the business of real estate every day. So that's, um, that's what I bring to the table and that's how we got from 115 up into the multi multi thousand units of man of uh, of ownership because I started attracting more and more money to my company while I also Justin surrounded myself by people that were great at other things that I'm not good at such as underwriting deals finding markets managing uh, a business process managing contractors and property managers managing properties themselves I am too nice Justin I'm not a good property manager I listen to tenants when they tell me that they can't afford to pay the rent because they got a flat tire or that they lost their job. I accept those things as excuses because I got a big, a big heart. Uh, my heart's bigger than my brain, right? So I end up, uh, I ended up managing myself with, uh, with just being a bit of a pushover for my tenants. And when my business exploded was when I allowed myself to focus on what I was great at, just raising capital, managing the brand of my company and allowing those that are maybe not as nice as me, Justin, um, manage the tenants and, and not accept those things as, as excuses. I'm throwing myself under the bus. I can be hard when I need to, but at the end of the day, it's better to use people who are really acting in their core talents in your business. And that was when we, when we took off. Incredible. So many things to unpack right there. You, you sure. put the right people in the right seat. You focused yes. on your superpowers. You aligned yourself with people who have their own skill sets and you let them run with their skill sets instead mm -hmm. of you trying to wear all the hats. And, and that's the problem with a lot of contractors, you know, they, they want to grow, they want to delegate and elevate, but what ends up happening is they get stuck in mom and pop mode. Yep. And you speak on building successful teams and how that helped you specifically to a contractor who's trying sure. to grow and elevate their business. Absolutely. So, I think that, first of all, the first thing you got to do is any contractor listening right now, they need to look at their business and they find themselves saying these words. These are the, like the words of sin, as a contractor can say, is no one can do that but me, right? Or I'm the only one that can. No, you are not. I guarantee you're not special. You're not a delicate snowflake. There are other people that can do whatever it is you're doing. There's someone else that can do it. And if that once you accept that as a truth, capital T truth, then yeah, I get it. You're the owner and they're not the people that you hire or whatnot. But once you can accept delegation as a fact of your business, if you want to grow and putting the right people in the right seats and business management, that's when you can really expand. And the first step you got to do once you, once you accept that truth that you're not the only one that can do things, then the next step beyond that is to sit down, um, as the contractor and write down what you're great at, right? Okay. I'm great at you know, business management or, or getting new leads or attracting eyeballs to my company um, or analyzing or underwriting, you know, uh, the, the construction bids or, or you know, uh, just writing up what, I, what we should price things at, whatever it may be. If that's what you do, that's what you're great at. That's the way you add the most value to your business. Just do that. And then have the courage, Justin, to write down what you're not great at. And that might take some courage. It might take some vulnerability. You might have to look self in the mirror a little bit. Um, but if you're really willing to get vulnerable, then you're not great at everything. No one is, uh, look yourself in the mirror, admit what you're not great at, and then make job descriptions for those things and start to have a goal of getting out there and hiring those that can do those things better than you can. Hmm. So true, man. It sounds like yeah. you've had a wealth of personal growth and development to get to this point in time. If you were to share a resource, uh, a good book that helped you to yeah. understand how to find your strength, how to put the right people in the right place, how to build a team. What would that resource be your book? I'll rattle off a few. Um, this is an oldie but goodie, by the way, but uh, folks that are, you know, they're business junk, business book junkies, or just, you know, if you like business concepts, the E-Myth 
been around forever and a day, but a lot of what I'm talking about today is e-myth level concepts. And so the e-myth has been rewritten, revisited and rewritten a few times, or might even be like derivatives of the e-myth that are aimed towards contractors, Justin. So maybe if you're aware of it, that's something that you could highlight, but um, the e-myth is one book. And then with regards to self-awareness, you need to, you, I'm talking to the contractor right now that's listening on the show, that's listening to me and Justin talk. You need to be, to get really good at getting aware of your strengths and weaknesses. And the way you do that is obviously talk to people, you know, and look at yourself in the mirror, but also take assessments. There are great assessments out there that will tell you what you're great at. You know, I mean, it'd take you 15, 20 minutes to take some of these things. My, one of my favorites is Strengths Finder, and that's a book. Yeah. Um, yep. But you take Strengths Finder. What's your what's your number? Would you have you taken Strengths Finder, Justin? I took this thing called Element. Something I put through my 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 team and my leadership. Yeah, I've taken you're familiar with letters, it. But I've taken. I, I know of it. I take something called the Elements Test, and Good. it's very similar. It they're they're parallel in what they teach. But me, my and the Elements is I'm a wood fire. So like a wood is somebody's hard charging go getter you know, has a bunch of ideas. I need an implementer. Uh, fire, I, I like to talk, but I don't like to like talk too much. I want to get straight to the point. I want results. Yeah. And then there's people yeah. who are like earth and water and metal, and they all have their own different types of, uh, you know, p- personality types. As for I love yourself, that analogy. Yeah. Yeah. As for yourself, what's your personality type? So for Strengths Finder, I'm my my believe it or not, being the capital raiser dude, this is like a shocker, but my my strength finder number one is positivity. <laughs> my 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 wife will tell you my favorite phrase is that it's all good. Uh um, oh, good. And I do We say that a lot out here. We say that a lot out here in Costa Rica. I'll bet you do, because you know what? <laughs> it is. I'll bet yeah. it is most days. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh um, no, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm curious, um, uh, regarding, you know, I mean you you are positive, you are obviously good at bringing in capital so that means that leads to the fact that you obviously know how to market yourself and the things that you're doing to market to bring in capital to attract money besides this podcast and other podcasts what are some things you're doing that potentially a contractor could do um i so i suggest i've yet to see a contractor do this so yet again here is an empty seat that a contractor could jump into. And that is getting themselves out there on social and putting interesting things like, hey, I'm replacing these cabinets. You see me replace these cabinets and this is how I did it. And this is where you put the screws and this is how you put in cabinets for a good rental um, in your rental properties or for your fix and flip or for your investment business or whatever it may be. Um, I, but to answer your question, Justin, is I put a lot of my stuff on YouTube. And now I've become a bit of a social media advocate where I'm like, I get social media is a great way to get attention to yourself using your handy dandy cell phone that we all have got. And what you could use that um, to shout in it on who you think ought to win the presidential election, or you could use it to grow your business. One of which is going to make you wealthy. The other one's not. The other ones make yeah. a lot of noise, uh, one of which can make you wealthy. So use your cell phone to make you wealthy and, uh, and put out social media posts and that kind of stuff regularly that are of interest to people. So a contractor could start doing Instagram posts and Twitter posts um, and YouTube. I'm a big fan of YouTube. Um, and it's not, I don't pick a certain vehicle. I just pick the ones that work. You can even do TikTok if you want. TikTok's getting a lot more traction as well. Um, but YouTube by far has been the gold standard because they're owned by Google. And so somebody Googles, I need to put new countertops into my rental property. They're going to see this awesome contractor that's going to say, hey, you want to put in, con- in, in countertops at your property and not break the bank? Let me show you how I overcoated these countertops. Or let me show you how I remanufacture these countertops to make them look awesome for less than 500 bucks, right? Whatever it may be. Th- those are great topics that like, not for nothing, Justin, I'd watch that video, right? Yeah. I wonder if I have yeah. new countertops for less than $500. That's awesome. I wonder yeah. how to do a kitchen for two grand. Yes. Show me how a contractor, you know? Right. Um, right. So put out things you know on social media. And the bottom line is there you must tell you cannot sell, right? Uh, I, I forbid you guys from getting out there on social media and just preaching about how great you are and how great your company is and how people should call you to do business. If you give them education and you teach on social media, the phone ringing from people that want to do business with you is an automatic derivative. It will happen and you have faith that it will. 
just put out good good free information, good free educational stuff that's in your core genius, stuff you understand, stuff that's interesting to other people. Have the courage to put it out there, and if you build it, they will come. Man, so so much to unpack right there. It's like it's so true. If you build it, they will come. And if you put it if you put it out there. And the first several times you do, you might not be good at it. But the bottom no. line is there's a structure. The structure that I do when I make videos, it's called hook, story, offer. Yep. So you want to add value, you say, hey, three tips. I'm going to show you how to win these government contracts. That's the hook. And then the story, you tell a story about you know somebody or whatever. Like for me, I tell a story about a guy who made videos just like you. And then I offer something at the end, like, hey, if you're interested, like and subscribe or whatever. So that's so important as a contractor, guys, get, get online, get, put yourself out there, make, yeah. make these videos and then do it regularly. Because if you post them on your social media and you have your team post them on their social media, guess what? When your workers at their family party and the uh, grandma is like, oh, I got a roof leak. The, somebody at the party will be like, oh, there's this guy on my social media that's showing every week. He's showing us to do these root, how he does his roofing. And then boom, that's how you attract these deals yeah. through your social yeah. media. And I give you one more word, Justin. And if you're not, if you don't want to go on social media, I get it. If that's not your core genius, I get it. Find somebody whose it is, right? Find somebody you want to partner with or align with to add to your team that is good at get it good at getting attention because getting attention is one strength of a company. And if that's not you, that's cool. I get you. Find somebody else who it is. Amen. Now I'm curious, what's your number one job? as the CEO or owner of your company? Um, it's interesting. I think it's every CEO's job to hold the vision of the company. Like this is where we're going. Play the infinite game. Um, we are go we are climbing that mountain and then the one after it and the one after it. That's, that's the, the first thing. Uh, second thing is to solve problems. Um, and that my phone rings when there is a major problem that someone needs uh, counsel, support, therapy, you know, I, I'm, you, you need, you need company therapy. You want to unload to somebody, give it, give it up, brother. I'll make you feel better. You know? Um, and if you need an outside the box idea to solve a problem or, uh, somebody to come in and close the big fish, uh, you know, the, the you know, client, that's me. And I think that a lot of times that's the CEO's function is to handle big things that will either take the company in the right direction or prevent it from going in the wrong direction. So you and I were both at a retreat this past week at a mastermind, yep. and I'm curious, what would you say your top three takeaways were from the first portion portion of that mastermind? And then because you're such a baller and you have such an incredible <laughs> track record of success, only you and a handful of other people got to be in that group. I wasn't there, yeah. but I'm going to get there. You I will be. Will. I'll save you a seat. So, okay, deal. I'll sit next to you. My question to you is, I want to know your top three takeaways from that as well. So top three takeaways, there is a certain mindset that it takes to achieve higher levels of success and stuff like that. And it's certainly not uh, greed or climb over your neighbor uh, or whatever. It is, to, it is uh, remi th that conference reminded me yet again that the key to success is a prosperity abundant mindset. Um, because everybody I've met, Justin, everybody, the people on the stage and the people in the audience uh, had a few things in common. They were the, those on the stage certainly modeled it this way. They were willing to get vulnerable, and the more you put yourself out there, that I am and I am a bulletproof, ironclad, um, you know, man or woman of steel, and there is nothing that can hurt me. The more the folks know around you that you're full of it, because we're all human, right? And so, a lot of folks in the audience and on stage got real and vulnerable, vulnerable about real things they're dealing with, including me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was really cool to see that. Additionally, there was no judgment. There was no, I'm better than you from anybody. I mean, I, you know, you sit next to guys that are worth 80, $90 million and they don't think that they're worth, they're, that they're any better than anybody. That guy worth 80, 90, 80, 90, 100 million, you know, would sit next to you and I and have lunch and, and like really share their thoughts on real things, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And so I found that those that are super wealthy and that, that, are, that are very successful, are also humble, right? Those that are that are bubble that, that are bubble successful need to pound their chests and make your bed. And they 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 do the King Kong thing, you know. They like to pound their chests and scream at the top of their lungs how great they are. But for a lot of it's typically smoke and mirrors. Those that are very successful that I met at that conference, Justin, as I'm sure you did too, 
uh, uh, are a lot more quietly, quiet, quietly, reserved. They're quietly confident. They're reserved and quietly confident. And they'll say, yeah, you know, I just bought a hundred unit apartment building with my own money and, you know, just decided to move my family to Costa Rica or whatever, you know, um, decided to do <laughs> th this really amazing vacation for, you know, three weeks or whatever it is. Yeah. But they do, they certainly don't screen that to the top of their lungs on social media. Those that want you to think that there's something else are the ones that need to scream those things at the top of their lungs from social media. Yeah, that's so true, yeah. man. They, they, the mindset of prosperity and abundance is yes. a skill set that you have to put into your daily habit. It doesn't just come to you. You have to work on yourself before your kids and before your wife wakes up. Yeah. You have to read. You have to go into yourself internally through meditation and prayer. You have to visualize your future as you see it to be. You have to put in some pain and discipline in the gym while listening to some type of audio book. Yeah. That is how you get a prosperity and abundance mindset. You have to wake up in a state of gratitude instead of a state of fear or stress. You have to activate it because these states of fear and stress, they're going to show up, but you have to silence that noise within you and you have yes. to say, what am I grateful for today? And then harness and feel that feeling of gra gratitude and love. Man, I love this. We're having fun. If you were to say, what is another tip that you learned or top takeaway from that retreat that we were both in this past week? I So there was a, there was a few conversations on where the market's going, right? And, and as much as like, you know, at the end of the day, Justin, everybody's crystal ball's broken, right? Um, yeah. Can't seem to get effects, you know, who knows? Um, but at the end of the day, I think that those that are going to be successful in, in the future, and the, those are the folks that you and I met, are not sitting around and waiting for anything to happen, right? They're not going to just, oh, I'm just going to sit on my hands and wait for the market to crash, or I'm going to just sit on my hands and wait for prices to come down or wait for interest rates to drop or whatever it is. They're not going to just wait, 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 wait. They get that there's always deals to be made. And you can't just get out there and buy whatever you can or do whatever deal that there is. But those that are willing to keep momentum moving are those that are going to be successful. And so uh, although they're keeping the ear to the ground, reading the tea leaves, hearing where things are going, they are still moving. Nobody that I met in that room is going to sit around and wait for anything. They're all, they just pivoted like, oh, OK, rates are up higher. I'll just change my business plan. Um, you know, can't buy a multifamily right now because it's overpriced. Okay, I'll just do this or I'll just build multifamily or I'll just try X, Y, Z. Um, the, the folks that I met, they're going to be successful are finding a way to reach their goals. They're not letting the market shifting affect for a second their ability to reach their goals. Absolutely. They have the hunter mentality. Yep. They're not gatherers. They're out there hunting and creating their destiny. They're out there yep. making things happen. They're out there, you know, taking down the lions and hunting and bringing in the food and not waiting for a handout or something like that. So Absolutely. I, I'll, we're going to, we're going to wrap it up, but I have two more questions on that event. We were both at, um, the guy, Nick, who went from 3 million until I think 250 million in less than three years, this net worth from three million to two hundred fifty million. What would you say, say is a wow? What was the what would you say is like one of the big takeaways you took from that? I think that that to do what he's able to do, which I was really really intrigued by him as well. Um, it, you can't just put the pedal. I, I think that like the the biggest thing that I got from you know talking to him um, and hearing his talk, or whatever, is his team, right? Um, that you can't just, oh, I just raised this amount of money uh, and that's how he was able to do his deal. Or he, you can't just, oh, I just came across a bunch of deals or whatever it is. You've got to have a team in place that, that's able to back up your growth um, because what, this is not what Nick did, but you or I could go and buy enough real estate to be at 300 million and we could end up wrapping it around a tree unless we've got a good team that's there to help us implement, right? Yeah. Um, and what what it takes to be successful and to grow exponentially like he did is a team that's prepared to handle the growth that you're putting onto your plate, right? Um, and so that's what I got into that conversation is growth is great, but team is what's going to make that growth, you know, turn into real checks that go back to you and your investors. Yeah, team, together everyone achieves more and whatever sure. you give them compensation, 
they get behind and they are like charged. They want to take the island because they have some benefit to, to, to help you succeed as the owner. Now, what characteristic or habit do you have that makes you so successful that you think if we all did, we'd, we'd be able to have a better life overall? Uh, I would say probably just say focus. Uh, and, and I'd say, by the way, Justin, everything I just talked about, include this entire podcast, you could listen to this whole podcast again and say the reason why Matt, you know, knows that this works is because he's done the other thing. You know, um, the, you know, I, I have bumped into enough bumpers to get to, to get successful and bumped into enough guardrails and sometimes driven right on through them um, to get successful. And so the reason why I know the focus is successful is because focus brings success is because I have not focused. Um, I have been the business owner that had four fix and flips going, was buying a couple of rentals, but also was working on a wholesale and was also running a coaching business and was also, and was also, and was also, and was also, right? Shiny, uh, shiny, shiny, shiny uh, object syndrome. Oh yeah. I, I had a yeah. pocket full of shiny nickels, man. I had a yeah. pocket full of them and that it added up to 35 cents. You know, yeah. um, that's the thing, you know, seven shiny nickels is not much, doesn't add up to much. And so what I found is that when I stopped chasing those shiny nickels and started focusing on mid-sized multifamily value add properties that need TLC, that need attention, uh, that are in growing markets is when our business blew up. And I let go of a lot of the stuff that was no longer serving me, all the fix and flips, all the cool, all the cool, sexy stuff that was really fun to do. Um, but also were detractions, uh, from where my core business was, um, and that's when things really took off, uh, Justin. And so I, to anybody listening, you don't have to do what I did. If you want to work with, uh, work, you know, with, with some awesome stuff, Justin's doing like, like government contracts and that kind of stuff. That is a phenomenal niche. Do that. Right. If you want to, you know, build apartment buildings, do that, but don't do that. And six other things do one thing uh, again, plugging the book, the one thing, you know, find the one thing that works. that's going to take you where you want to go and have the courage to say no to everything else. Man, that's beautiful. Mid-sized multifamily, that seems like that's your niche. What would you say is what would you say is the criteria for you? And then the, the to add to that question is what are you doing to find these deals? Like what are your strategies? Yeah. Um well, what's great is cuz I got cuz I got a team cuz I don't do it all myself. I have an acquisitions manager who's my business partner who it's on him to find us deals. Um, and he sure does, you know, and he, he's great at, uh, finding brokers, uh, latching onto them, having regular relationship calls with them, checking in with them. Hey, what you got, what you got, what you got. Um, he's the guy when it comes to acquisitions and relationships, um, in that. So that, that's how we find deals is by, you know, really owning. Oh, and focusing on a market. I'm not buying in 30 markets across the continental United States, Justin, my company is seeking in two markets right now. That's it. You know, and we know those markets like the back of our hand and we know the brokers that play in those markets very well. And we take them out to coffee and lunch pretty regularly. Right. Uh, Amen. Amen. Yeah. And, and contractors listening in, this applies to you 100%. So, you know, as a contractor, you can focus in on real estate agents. You can focus on in on insurance agents. You can focus in on some avatar person that yep. will give you a ton of business. It could be a general contractor that gives you business. Or if you want to take matters into your own hands and never have to depend on anybody, you can learn how to win these high paying government contracts. That's what I teach over at Federal Construction University. I have the book Federal Construction Contract Simplified.com. That link will be in the comments below. Now, uh, that's. It's beautiful that you're saying that because you have to have a team and you have to know where to get the business from. Now, I'm curious, Matt, what would you say is the best process you have in your business that makes you most proud? Explain what it is and the benefits it brings to you. Yeah. Um, aside from like, I mean, there's uh, tools that we use with regards to like monday.com. Um, but we're, we're not adverse to technology, but we don't like live and breathe by it. We also get that people are really what makes things happen. Um, I talk, the, the process that I would say that really makes us successful is we are willing to have regular business based conversations, not like, you know, talk around in circles on things, but just, we use a model that's like, okay, let's pretend Justin and I are on a team. Um, what I, what we would do, Justin, is we would simply huddle up, you, you know, you and me and whoever else. 
and we would talk about, here's the important things I'm working on. Here's what I'm waiting on from Justin. Here's what I need from Justin. And here's what to expect from me. And I give my, my report on what I'm in the middle of really concise, really crips, not 15 minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Mm -hmm. I summarize my week in three to four minutes in talking to when I, when I'm talking to those on my team. And if I can't do that, I'm working on too many things. Mm, if I can't beautiful. summarize what I'm on, like if I can't be like, yeah, I'm gonna record this many podcasts, uh, really pushing for that acquisition, trying to raise that million this week, you know, and I've got a, a student call later, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. We should all have like three to five main like objectives for, like, well, we write down seven goals for the day, but we need to knock out three big ones first and foremost in the morning. That's a productivity yeah. app. Love that. As far as the quarter goes, you know, a quarter is every three months. Uh, the, this quarter will end 331 of 2023. We, mm -hmm. each of us needed to have two to four, like, I got to get this done. And if I get this done, everything else will fall into place. Now it's important to just have team-based communications. This is what I'm working yeah. on. This is what I'm working on. This is what you're working on. This is what you need. This is what I need. You can't have companies that operate in a silo, Justin. You can't have, you got to have cross communication constant. This is what I'm doing. This is what you're doing um, in that. And that, that's where you create a real team that has each other's back. And that really helps to create an organizational chart, list out everybody on who's on your team, list out exactly what they do, what are their boundaries. And then what you're going to find is you're going to find that this guy over here and this person over here are sometimes doing the same thing. And that's not how a business is supposed to be run. It's supposed to be one person owns the task because if more than one person owns the task, nobody can be held accountable to it. So it's great. It's Yeah. Good point. <laughs> it's beautiful that you're saying this. Now, as far as being a great husband, a great father, if you could share, if you could share things that you, that you do, practices, techniques, strategies. So, cause it's not about all just money and business and success. And what really matters is how we show up for our family. Elaborate yeah. on that. Yeah. So I, um, interesting you bring this up. I, uh, I, I got this out at, at, um, at the GoBundance conference as well. Uh, which was that I also, I, I need to, I decide, you know, vulnerability. I need to allow my kids to be kids more often. Um, and so often as parents, we have high expect. I mean, as, as a good father, it's almost like you kind of want to have high expectations that they can live, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, it's not your job to make life super easy for them so that when they graduate from childhood into adulthood, you know, they, they go into life you know, soft, right? They, they got to go into life expecting life to be difficult because guess what? Life is difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Life is not easy. Um, and I want to prepare my children for life um, by making, you know, you know, their, their upbringing like full of love, but also full of challenges too, right? They're bearing that on the other side. I also need to let my kids be kids. And so I probably realized at the GoBundance, not probably, I did realize at the GoBundance retreat that I am probably being too hard on my own, uh, especially my son, because it's just a father-son thing, that I probably was pushing him a little harder than I needed to. And not for nothing, the kid's nine. He's great. He's a great, great, great guy, uh, uh, child and a great uh, rising human being. Um, but I also need to let him be nine too. And so that might mean allowing him to just do things that kids do a little bit more um, and uh, and then just, you know, give him some grace, give him some forgiveness as I probably a little more often than I was. Um, and so that's one tool. And I think that it, anybody listening that's a parent need to, needs to realize, listen, these guys don't come with manuals. And there's a bunch of books and a lot of opinions on there out there about how to raise kids. But at the end of the day, they're your kids and you raise them the way you want to, of course. Um, but also you can course correct as you go. And so you hear good advice. Yeah, that's interesting. Let me try that, you know? And so I've just been willing to course correct as a parent, um, and, and as a father of my kids and be willing to forgive myself too. As much as I forgive him, I got to forgive myself. Cause guess what? I'm not perfect either. I'm growing. I had a great conversation with my son, my nine-year-old, when I got home from GoBundance about what I'd gotten from it. And he and I really had some really great breakthroughs and he really received it and thanked me for the conversation, you know? I love that. There's this thing called the alignment conversation. I learned from another GoBundance bro on this podcast. And basically what we do is we have a conversation with our wife and our kids and our leaders. That's why you can do this in your business. It's called the alignment conversation. And I want to give you some value uh, directly, Matt. And I also want to Please. give our listeners some, some value. 
the questions go, they're pretty simple. Basically, it goes, the, what you say is, hey, how you doing? I want to check in on you. And the, the my first question to you is, what did you do well last week? And then let them talk. And then from there you say, hey, these are the things that I appreciate about you. One, two, three, four. And then you say, where could you have improved last week? Where could What could you have done better? And then you say, where could I improve as your dad or as your boss? Mm-hmm. Or, or where could we as our company improve? Yeah. And you will, you will find nuggets. You will find powerful nuggets from your family, from your wife, from your kid, yeah. from your leaders in your organization. And then you ask, how'd you feel about last week? And like, there, there's like a light bulb moment for the person you're talking to. They're like, wow, this person really cares about me. Yeah. After you, after you do this alignment call. So thank you for sharing uh, and being vulnerable about family and, and everything. That's that's awesome. We all need to do that as men. We have to show up as warriors. We have to show up as gladiators. We have to show up as leaders who impact our wife and our kids because society will impact them and TV and Netflix and music and pop culture. It'll, net, it'll impact them in a negative way if you don't put your foot down and and put forth those efforts to be present and impact them how mm-hmm. you want to impact them. Mm-hmm. So that's my rant on that. Um, curious, curious. what would you say is your best tip? This is the final question, by the way. What would you say your best tip you can give to an owner of a construction company who's leading individuals who wants to leave a legacy? Yeah. Um, mm, so many. Uh, the one that I typically give is never quit. Um, and that the, those, the, the, anybody that just, if you're, if you fail, it's only because you quit. Um, there are dozens of times that I could have unplugged the plug of my business, um, and, uh, and then walked away from it and tried something else. You know, let me go, let me go to do something different. Uh, let me go back and get a job, whatever it is. Um, but I didn't, and I kept going. And I think that I attribute, that's where I attribute a lot of my success to is by, Dusting my saw, you know, like once I, when I get that right hook, um, uppercut, you know, right in the middle of my chin and, and it knocks me on the mat, getting back up into the ring for another round is where I think a lot of the elements of success are. Um, and there's a great book, uh, Justin called the infinite game, realizing that life and business and marriage and parenthood and all these things are all infinite games. It is not a beginning, middle, and an end. This is not a football game that's got a score and then the game's over on a certain day. Um, it, it, all the way up until the, you, the, the day you and I pass is, is when our game is air quote over, but it actually, if you play the game of legacy and vision and context, it actually continues beyond us. And so if we look at everything as infinite um, and that I can constantly tweak and grow and try again and then try again and try again, and just play the infinite game, the infinite game of life, and you realize there is no finish line. There's not. You just got to keep going and keep pushing and keep growing um, through adversity, through trials, through changing economies, and, and and you'll continue to grow and expand along with it. Matt Faircloth, the owner of the DeRos- DeRosa Group, you have syndication opportunities for people to invest who are too busy buying real estate where they can put funds in and make returns. You're also an author of Raising Private Capital. If you could share with our audience how they can reach out to you, where they can find you and get more value from you. Sure. They can, uh, just our company website, DeRosa Group, D-E-R-O-S-A group.com, DeRosa Group.com. They can Get a copy of my book there. Uh, they can also check out our education products and our passive investment products at that website as well. Man, Matt, you dropped, you dro- you delivered today, man. I appreciate you Thanks, being brother. on the Real Construction Owners Podcast. Have a good Thanks day, for the opportunity. You too. Yes. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I do this for you to add value to you. Now that I live in Costa Rica, I hope that this is, you're benefiting from this. Please subscribe and drop a comment. What's the one thing you learned or where are you listening in from? Hey, if I've got six free classes for you teaching you how to win government contracts, the link will be down below. I also have my book, Federal Construction Contract Simplified. The link will be down below as well. It'll give you the blueprints, the scripts, the methodologies teaching you how you can win deals and get them done remotely by handing them over to the best local subcontractors and being the middleman. Obviously, there's still risk involved, but you can do the projects and have an eight-figure business utilizing government funds. 
So if you want to increase your profits by winning government construction contracts immediately, then go to those links down below because you can do all this without stress and this will give you peace of mind by being able to follow a proven roadmap. So if that interests you, again, go to federalconstructioncontractsimplified.com and I'll see you in the next training video.